Hi guys, I'm Simon. I'm the writer and director of the sci-fi film Kaleidoscope Man and I thought it was about time that I gave you some answers to how I'm getting on with the movie. So yesterday on Facebook and Twitter I let people know that uh, they can ask me questions and I kind of wish I hadn't asked because I had so many. So I'll do my best to answer them. Here we go. What's in the can? What's the next major tranche of work? How many more campaigns? Do you think you'll have to go for a lower budget approach? As creatively as possible, of course. OK, well, I sat down the other day and I went through all the footage and I'm really pleased to say that we have about 35% in the can. Now, if you were to look at it, it looks really random because it's a bit here, a bit there, and a bit there, and then you've got a chunk here, and, then, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Of course, you know, it's, it's like building a jigsaw. You get the pieces together and slowly it starts to take shape. So I'm really, really pleased with the way it's going. Um, there's, I'm, I'm, my plan is to try and finish it, finish the shooting anyway, by the end of this year. Um, and we're running a, a new campaign soon. I'm going to be asking for another big chunk of money. Whether we hit our target or not, I don't know. I kind of got a good feeling that we, we'll do very well out of it. Um, and I want to shoot another... Oh, a really big chunk of the movie to be honest if we if we hit our target I'd say we'd probably get to 80 possibly 90 percent shots um, so I'm I think if I'm really honest with you there'll be this next fundraising campaign there'll probably be one more fundraising campaign for the um, for the shoot that's providing we hit our targets if we don't hit our targets I've just got to keep going and then then I'll be looking for another we're doing another campaign to help pay for the special effects or the CGI work and then there'll be another campaign uh, possibly for the music, for the post-production. So I'm afraid it is ongoing, but I've got to tell you, the movie's looking fantastic. And John, you mentioned the, uh, the low-budget approach. You know what, I'm just approaching this like I would approach any film, uh, and I'm just making it, I'm reaching as, as high as we can, I'm trying to get the best locations, trying to get the best actors, and you know, we're just doing everything we can to make sure that it looks like a big, proper movie. Of course, it will be a low-budget movie, you know, and the, the sad thing is people don't get the wages I'd like to pay them. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to share everything so everybody gets something. But, you know, when, you've, when you raise, you know, £7,000 or whatever, you can spend it very, very quickly, especially when you're hiring big lights and cranes and generators uh, and closing streets. That really eats up the cash. But that doesn't matter. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to reach for the stars on every single shot and make sure it looks it looks like a big movie, you know, a big Hollywood movie set in Birmingham. <laughs> Has the script changed quite a lot since the first draft? Hi, Ben. Well, that's a great question, mate. Thank you for asking it. And Ben's in the movie, everybody, by the way. Um, yes, the script has changed phenomenally over the 10-year period that I've written it. You know, originally I had three short story ideas, and I thought, these are... They're all very, very different. I thought, how can I combine these three stories? And then one day, I was walking up in the hills, um, and it was like a, it was like a light bulb moment. Um, they've been abducted by aliens, and that was where the story came from. But of course, going from that to where I am now, it's it's taking a lot of work, a lot of drafts. I have done hundreds of drafts. Crack it, you know. And, and the, the one that I send out it says draft twenty-one. I think honestly, I've done hundreds, and I've. I've a few years ago, I got to a point when I felt the script was a mess, you know, it just had lots of people had chipped in and I'd lost, lost its way. And I went back and I started again, phase one, and I said, what was, what was it about this script that I really wanted to make? What was the story I wanted to tell? And, um, and, it, and, you know, and, and I took all the good stuff out and I've got a really good script now, a script that I'm really pleased with and I really believe in it. So yes, the script has changed fundamentally, but for the better. Wondering where the name came from and if Kaleidoscope Man is a regular human or more of a caped crusader with superhuman powers. Hi Mary. Well, that's a really good question. And by the way, thank you for your wonderful support over the last cracky year. You've been amazing and it's been a real pleasure to indirectly know you. Um, now, Kaleidoscope Man. A lot of people have asked me about this. I, if I'm really honest, I liked the, you know, the song, the line in the Beatles, uh, The Girl with Kaleidoscope Eyes. I like that. I like films from the 60s and 70s, Marathon Man and that sort of thing. But Kaleidoscope Man, he, there is no kind of caped crusader in the movie. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but basically our hero Tom, as a boy, he 
really um, admired this TV character called Kaleidoscope Man, which, to be honest, in my little Simon Cox world, uh, is based on the Six Million Dollar Man. Um, I didn't want to use the Six Million Dollar Man, and you know, I've done blog videos about it, so I might as well be honest with you. And and you know, the, this TV show has a huge influence on our hero, and he grows up, and he really wants to be like that. You know, deep down, I think we're all kind of um, affected by the culture we're we're exper you know we're exposed to when we're very young, and you know, and and Tom starts his life with this potential he can be anybody he has the world the world is his oyster but you know unfortunately he makes a choice things go wrong and he's left with his burden and he kind of resents this thing he was given this you know he, he kind of resents being exposed to this as he gets older because you know he realizes the hard way that real life isn't like that you know unfortunately life's tough and he learns that the hard way. And so Kaleidoscope Man is what he really wanted to be. And of course, he, he can't be, because life's not like that. However, when aliens invade, that's when everything changes. So you never know. What made you decide to have three supporting leads be patients in a mental health facility? That's a really, really good question. And I think a lot of people watching this won't actually know what this is all about. But we have four main characters um, that the story kind of the film revolves around and three of them are, are basically patients in a in a um, psychiatric hospital now they're not they're not bad they're not dangerous it's, you know they're just people that have experienced depression and illness and just not got the best out of life and Tom is their doctor and together they go on the adventure together and you know I I came up with this idea about 10 years, 12 years ago, I, I did a, one of my videos that I do for people. I did one for a charity in a place called Bournemouth. Um, and it's, uh, it was basically a place where people that experience mental health issues, they go and they do plant therapy and they just kind of help each other get over their illness or, or come to terms with their illness because there isn't really a cure for some of these things. And uh, I just, I was so impressed with this. You know, perceptionally, I think, you know, when, when a lot, lot of us, we think of mental illnesses, oh my God, you know, Friday the 13th, they're all nutters, and whereas they're not. These are real people. These are our families, our friends, our relations, you know, even us. We can all experience um, mental health issues. And I just thought, let's set story with these real people with, with real problems. And of course, throw these guys into, into an alien invasion and uh, see how they deal with it. And it's it's a really interesting, I think it gives us a really interesting insight into the human condition. So, of course, when you watch the film, you, you can decide that for yourselves. But, I, you know, I meant it, it comes from a really genuine place. And I'm hoping we've got really genuine characters here. How does the constant evolution of computer-generated effects affect what you have already filmed? Are you concerned by the potential difference in quality between scenes that are generated over a number of years? Hi, John. Well, I, I, I thought um, about this question quite a bit, and I don't really think it's going to make a significant impact. I mean, you know, to be honest, the, the effects, we did some effects about, crikey, the opening scene you've seen with the guy in the pod, that's about five years old, just because we've rewritten the script, and I've changed that quite a bit, you see, and we've redesigned the pod, so we are actually going to do all that again. So I think, you know, the, the effects will actually be done over a period of, I guess, a year and a half. So I don't think technology is going to change that much. There's no way we're going to be shooting in 3D or, or anything like that. And um, to be honest, I'm shooting on the camera that I'm filming this one, actually. It's the one you would have seen in the blog videos. It's a Panasonic Vericam. It is a, a slightly old school camera. You know, there are, there are some newer cameras now that look absolutely fantastic. But, you know, I just decided to work within the parameters of what I have available to me. And I think, say that to any filmmaker, you know, we can, we can all, I want the new latest Ari or whatever. If you can't afford it, you've got to go do what you can. And you know, this camera, that when I bought it, it was a very, very expensive camera. I mean, 10 times what we people pay for their cameras now. And I thought to myself, you know, if I can't make a good film on this camera, then I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be making films. So, you know, I think the film's gonna look great and it'll be great and the effects are great. I just want to make sure that it looks consistent and that's something that I'm aware of, but I don't think it's going to be a problem because of technology changes. Are all the big scenes done? 
Yes, D, that's a great question. One of the things that, that has been funded over the last year and a half are the big scenes, and the big scenes are the scenes where the spaceships attack the cities and everybody runs like crazy. We've, so, so yes, I've, I've pretty much got those done. I've got a few little pickups to do and a few more laser blastings, but the big stuff is done. And it was, it was quite a feat to pull it off, actually, and I'm really pleased with the footage. I think people are going to be blown away when they see it. Um, so, yeah, that's done. We've still got some big effect scenes to shoot, but it won't be on quite the scale. You know, when you've got 700 people running around through the streets of Birmingham and lights on cranes and things, that's, that's the big stuff. So, yes, the big stuff is done. What scenes do you have left to shoot, and when do you plan to shoot them? Well, we've got uh, one more scene with uh, Lucy Drive in the school. She plays a school teacher. We've got her, that's those sequences to shoot. Um, then we've got the main ensemble cast. We've got everything of Tom and Mandy in their flat. We've got a scene quite a few days in a hospital where we, we have uh, Tom, Floyd, Harriet uh, and Samantha. And that's where we we'll also have Toya Wilcox in those scenes as well. Um, so we've got the hospital scenes, then we've got a scene in the mansion house, then we've got a scene in a uh, cinema, then we've got a scene in a, um, uh, a country cottage, um, then we've got loads of green screen stuff to do, which is the scene in the in alien spaceship. So we'll have little bits of sets and loads of green screen. And then we've got the big chunk at the end, which is the scene on the alien planet. Uh, and we're going to shoot that somewhere in the Canary Islands. Um, talking to people about that at the moment. That's, I think I might do that as a separate phase. Depends on how well this phase is doing. Um, but I need to shoot that fairly quickly because of our access availabilities and hairstyles and all that sort of thing. So, um, so that's what we've got left to shoot. And then of course we've got uh, half a million effects to do. <laughs> so it should be fun. When do you envisage having all the filming done, ready to go into post-production? To answer that question, a lot of it depends on um, how the crowdfunding goes. Um, I would like, in fact, I'm determined to have the film completely shot by the end of the year. And I'm hoping to have it completely edited as well. Um, of course, then there's the, the big run of effects, which is going to take quite a while. And I can't really start post-production properly until all the effect shots are done. Um, so there's quite a bit to do there. So there will be a few more phasing, uh, uh, funding phases um, to come over the next sort of few months. But, uh, you know, that's my plan. We're going to nail it by the end of the year. And as regards releasing it, um, towards the end of next year, I think, realistically, once the effects are done.